Aloha, welcome back to Practical Printing. If you have been following along with the Moai series, you would have picked up that there are two different ways to cure the UV-based resin that is used in the Moai and the Form 1 and similar SLA printers like that. The first way is to leave it out in the sun. The second way is to cure it using UV LEDs or UV lights. So today we're going to throw together a quick down and dirty UV curing oven. Ready? Let's do it. Okay, so for our project today, we're going to keep this down, dirty, and simple. What we're going to use is a five-quart metal pail that I picked up at Home Depot for about five bucks. We're going to use some UV LEDs that I picked up off of Amazon, and I've included a link down below if you'd like to pick some of these up for yourself. Of course, a power supply to drive those. A piece of foam recycled out of one of the boxes that I've torn apart recently and a roll of foil tape and the paper towels that just fell over. What we're going to do is we're going to take this bucket, we're going to use the foam to create a lid for it basically and cover that with the foil tape to make it reflective. Then we're going to take the LEDs and we're basically going to run it down in a chain so that it covers all of the inside, um, all of the sides here, and gets us as much coverage and as much UV in the bucket as we can. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to start off by putting the bucket here upside down onto the foam in kind of a, a generally good area. I am going to go ahead and use a Sharpie to trace out the bucket here. And then I'm going to go ahead and freehand, so that is our outside diameter. Then I'm going to go ahead and freehand this about roughly a centimeter. It doesn't have to be perfect here. Roughly a centimeter bigger than the inside circle. Then I'm going to go ahead and take a razor knife and cut this out. Okay, now that we have that cut out, it doesn't have to be perfect here, but you can kind of pick away the edges if you want, or you can wrap those in tape if you choose to. What we're going to do is we're going to look and find the best side of this, and that's going to be our up, just to be cosmetically pretty. And we're going to kind of swing that up like that. I'm going to mark out a couple of little notches here around where this handle goes. And we're going to go back and trim those out as well with the knife. Okay. Now that that's cut, the handle can kind of go in the upright position there and just hold it, help hold it in place so that you can move it around if you need to. Okay, so let's set this bucket back aside. And our next step is we're going to want to cover this with the foil tape so that we're creating a reflective surface. If you don't have the foil tape or you want to save a little bit of money, you could probably just cover this with aluminum foil or tin foil, and it would probably work just as well. Um, I have the 
Nashua tape, so I figured it's probably just uh, kind of not getting used, so I might as well use it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, we have one side done. I'm going to go ahead and cover the other side just so it looks a little bit less trashy here, but nothing, uh, nothing that has to be done. So let me go ahead and do that now. Okay, there we have it. We have both sides wrapped and it still looks pretty trashy, but it's gonna work for our purposes. So we'll set this on here and swing this up. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up and we will move on to lining the bucket. Okay, actually before we line the bucket, I did miss one step. One thing that I did forget to do, do is to 90 degrees off center, either here or here. I wanted to notch that out. That was going to be our upside. That was going to be our downside. Wanted to kind of notch that out in the foam, like so. You don't necessarily have to recover that piece unless you want to, but we want to. We need a way for the cable to come out from the the lighting once that's on there. So that's done. Let's set it aside and move on to the bucket. Okay. If you can see, probably not in the camera, but there are fingerprints and human handprints and everything from the store all over the inside of this bucket. So the first thing I'm going to do is take some IPA, some isopropyl alcohol, and a paper towel and just wipe it out to get the, uh, the grease from the human hands off of it. Okay, that should dry pretty quick there. Now we can go ahead and take a look at our LEDs here. So the LEDs come like this on a strip and let's see if I can get that to you. Just like that, but these are a purple UV LED and there's an adhesive on the back. So we're just gonna start at the top in the center about where we want that power cord to come out and we're basically going to run it down as far as we can from the top down. Okay, that's done. Let me see if I can show you guys here. So it's all coiled up around there. Now, my spiral isn't perfect, and you'll notice that as I was doing it in the time lapse there, I had to keep going back and pressing down the corners. And unfortunately, that's just the nature of this really stiff stuff and the adhesive that doesn't hold super well. So. Uh, if you see it popping away, just go back and press it down. It does conform eventually. And the next step here is let's power this up. I'm going to grab a power cord and we'll do that now. Okay, I have the power cord plugged in, so let's fire it up and see if we have light. Survey says there it goes. And that's what we get inside. So now to use this, you just set your part down inside there. We'll take this lid, we'll angle it where that V-slot is for the cord to come out there. Pull the handle up. And we now have our UV curing oven. 
based on what I've read, you're going to want to leave your part in here for roughly an hour to two hours, depending on the type of resin and material that you use to print. I believe most of the PO Poly branded resin cures in about an hour. Okay, so that about wraps it up for building our UV curing oven. This is really down and dirty and there's a lot of refinements that can be made to this, obviously, and I will eventually make to this. Um, for example, one thing I'm going to end up doing is designing and printing some sort of a little rack that I could set down at the bottom so that it'll allow the part to not sit directly on the bottom and lift it off so that you can try to cure the underside of the print as well and expose it to the reflected UV. Um, could possibly add a second roll of the UV LEDs in here to intensify the amount of light. It's gonna take some experimentation to find out how well this works and it could end up taking longer times to cure depending on how much UV is in there. The other thing I may end up doing also is while this was my down and dirty lid for this with the reflective surface, I may end up designing a snap-on lid that I can 3D print that just fits right over the lid and then cover the inside of that with the reflective foil. I think that will be a lot nicer in the long run. But for now, this serves my purposes and will allow me to cure the parts that I'm pulling off the Moai. All right, so that about wraps it up for today's episode of Practical Printing. If you like what we're doing, please subscribe and ring the bell if you'd like to get notified of the videos as soon as new ones are posted. So with that, I bid you good day and aloha.